subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello friends, this is Santanam from Officers IAS Academy and in this video, it is going to be a continuation of what we saw in the last video which is the solving of previous year's UPSC questions. So in the last video if you remember, we solved ancient Indian history questions that has been asked in UPSC prelims since 2015 to 2019. Now we will do the same thing for medieval Indian history. So here we will look at all the questions that has asked that has been asked in medieval Indian history in UPSC prelims in these five years time period 15 to 19 and we will start right away starting with the first question. The arrival of Babur into India led to the number one introduction of gunpowder in the subcontinent. Did Babur introduce gunpowder into India? The answer is no. Babur came in the 16th century. Babur came in the 16th century and when Babur came and he established his Mughal empire in India, he did not introduce gunpowder into India. He was the one who introduced cannons in India. Gunpowder in India has been introduced much earlier itself from the 14th century or even sometimes 13th century itself. It is not new to India. So the first statement is wrong. If the first statement is wrong, you can eliminate A, C and D. The answer is option B. Already you know the answer. But still we will go through the 2 and 3 statements also. Introduction of the arch and dome in the region's architecture. The introduction of arch and dome in the region's architecture with the arrival of Babur. Did Babur introduce arch and dome in India? The answer is no. Why? It was introduced under the time of Delhi Sultanate itself. So Babur, Mughals came after Delhi Sultanate. So therefore it is not the correct statement. Establishment of the Timur dynasty in the region. That is correct. Babur is a descendant of Timur and therefore Timur dynasty is established here. So 1 and 2 are wrong, 3 is correct, the answer is option B, 3 only. Question number 2, who of the following founded a new city in the south bank of a tributary to river Krishna and undertook to rule his new kingdom as the agent of a deity to whom all the land south of river Krishna was supposed to belong. So this is something that has to be known factually. You should know which king had this idea in his head. The south bank of a tributary to river Krishna, the tributary they are talking about is Tungabhadra. Tungabhadra. And the king they are talking about, the empire they are talking about is Vijayanagar empire. And who started it? Of these options, you would say it is option C, Harihara. Harihara and his brother Bukka, they are the ones who started the Vijayanagar Empire. So it is under them that this happened. So answer is option C, Harihara, the first. Statement number three. With reference to the cultural history of medieval India, consider the following statements. Siddhas or Sittars of Tamil region were monotheistic and condemned idolatry. Monotheistic meaning believing in one God and condemning idolatry meaning do not worship idols. Did Siddhas not worship idols or did Siddhas generically as a philosophy? Does the Siddha philosophy does not accept idol worship? The answer is true. Yes, by philosophy. Siddhars were not involved in idol worship. So that statement is actually correct. Lingayats of Kannada region meaning Karnataka questioned the theory of rebirth and rejected the caste hierarchy. The Lingayats follow the worship of Linga, Shiva Linga. But understand the Lingayat community has been practicing the worship of Linga from way before the Brahmanical tradition started of worshipping Linga. So here they are against this concept of caste system because they are against the Brahmanical order and they are also not okay with the theory of rebirth because they believe that once a person dies, he goes and reunites with the Lord himself, Shiva himself or Pashupati himself. So that statement is also correct. 
both statements are correct the answer is option C both 1 and 2 question number 4 Banjaras during the medieval period of Indian history were generally without even looking at the answer options I can tell the answer it is traders the reason is Alauddin Kilji used Banjaras to purchase food grains from the peasants and sell them to the retailers and the marketers in the towns and cities. So Banjaras were traders who were involved in the supply chain mechanism of goods trade in the medieval Indian history and this is mentioned specifically during the time of Alauddin Kilji. So the answer is outright option D traders. Question number 5 with reference to the economic history of medieval India the term Aragata refers to as you can see the image it is pot well or pot turned wheels it is something which was used for irrigation purpose it is not bonded labor it is not a land grant water wheel used in the irrigation of land that is correct it is not a wasteland converted to cultivated land that is not the case it is a water wheel used for irrigation of land as you can see in the image this is called as aragata question number 6 regarding the taxation system of krishna deva the ruler of vijayanagar consider the following statements the tax rate on land was fixed depending on the quality of land so if the land is very high it is having high fertility of course the tax rate is going to be fixed based on the amount the quality of soil because with high fertility there is going to be lots of production and therefore the tax can be high if it is of low fertility and if you are going to tax the peasant to a great extent the peasant will fail will feel the brunt of the taxation and is going to feel miserable so krishna deva was very thoughtful in this matter and he in fact fixed the tax rate based on the quality of the land itself so that is correct statement private owners of workshop paid an industries tax and that's also correct taxation system in medieval india has become very complex all throughout the country and here is an example where different industries and different merchants and traders and productive economically productive people were taxed in different ways so here in the vijayanagar kingdom this is how it was happening where even merchants and industries uh, people working in industries people owning industries they were also made to pay an industries tax so both the statements are correct the answer is option c both one and two question number seven which one of the following was a very important seaport in the kakatiya kingdom so kakatiya kingdom is in the south so here the options are kakinada motupalli machilipatnam or masolipatnam and nellur which of it would be the seaport here with regards to Kakatiya Kingdom, the answer is straightforward once again it is factual, it is Motupalli. Motupalli is known to be a very busy seaport and this place was visited by Marco Polo. He has talked about Motupalli being an important seaport of the Kakatiya territory. So the answer is option B for question number 7. Question number 8, which one of the following foreign travelers elaborately discussed about the diamonds and diamond mines in India? So once again a factual question. The answer is quite simple. It is Jean Baptiste Tavernier. So what did he do? He has actually traveled to different parts of India. He has listed exactly where diamond mines are in India, where diamonds are present and not just that. He in fact was the one who studied the peacock throne of Shah Jahan and he is the one who gave an estimate as to how much it would cost to make that throne made up of studded with so much of gold, silver, platinum, sapphires and emeralds. So that's Jean Baptiste Tavernier that is the answer to this question option B. Question number 9 in the consider the following statements in the revenue administration of Delhi Sultanate, the in charge of revenue collection was known as Amil. That is a correct statement. Yes, that is correct. Amil is the person who is going to collect revenue from the people. Statement number two. Ikta system of Sultans of Delhi was an ancient indigenous institution. They are saying, no, that is wrong. Because Ikta system is something that was developed 
under Ghori, Muhammad Ghori, also known as Muizuddin Muhammad. So it was developed under him, which is nothing but breaking the territory into small, small patches of land and those lands being given to certain commanders or government officials or even uh, administrators for the administration of that land. So therefore, Ikta system is not an indigenous institution, ancient Indian indigenous institution is not the case. It is something that was derived from the Ghurid administration. Third, the office of Mir Bakshi came into existence during the reign of Khalji Sultans of Delhi, meaning Khiljis of Delhi. The answer is once again, no, it is not the case. Because Mir Bakshi came under the Mughals. It was an office which attained a lot of prominence and power under the Emperor Ashoka. And therefore, option 2 and 3 are wrong. Statement 2 and 3 are wrong. 1 is correct. The answer for the ninth question is option A, 1 only. Question number 10. Consider the following statements. Saint Nimbarka was a contemporary of Akbar. Is this statement correct? The answer is no. Because Akbar lived in 16th century. Nimbarka lived in 13th century. So obviously it is not correct. So Nimbarka and Akbar are not contemporaries. Saint Kabir was greatly influenced by Sheikh Ahmed Shri Sirhindi. Well, this statement is also wrong because Kabir lived in the 14th century. Ah, Ahmed, uh, Sheikh Ahmed uh, Shirindi, he lived in the 16th century. And therefore, once again, if Kabir was living before Sri Hindi, obviously he could not have been influenced by this other person who came later. So the second statement is also wrong. Both the statements are wrong here. And the answer for this question is option D, neither one nor two. Question number 11. With reference to Mian Tansen, which of the following statements is not correct? That's what they're asking. So option A, Tansen was a title given to him by Emperor Akbar. No, this statement is not correct because it was a title given to him by Vikramjit, one other king Vikramjit who was ruling some other place in India. And Mian is a title given by Akbar to Tansan. Mian meaning a learned man. It's a very honorific title given by Akbar to Tansan. And Tansan is the title given to uh, him by Vikramjit, King Vikramjit. So Tansan is the title and what is his actual name? His actual name is Ram Tanu. That is his actual name, Ram Tanu. And that Ram Tanu got this title of Tansan from Vikramjit and Mian from Akbar. And now we call him Mian Tansan. We don't even call his actual name. So the statement uh, option A is wrong. They are asking what is not correct. That is the answer which is not correct. B, C and D are correct. So you look at B, C and D where Tansan composed Drupads on Hindu gods and goddesses. That is correct. Tansan composed songs on his patrons. That is also correct. Tansan invented many ragas. That's also correct. Tansan is a very famous musician who lived in the medieval Indian era who is known especially for his Hindustani classical music. So that's where he is attaining prominence here. Who among the following Mughal emperors shifted emphasis from illustrated manuscripts to albums and individual portrait? So illustrated manuscripts where you will have certain books where in which in between there are certain images present. So that's the way how paintings were used in the beginning. But later on, individual paintings, standalone paintings were made. And these standalone paintings were made under the rulership of Akbar. Because under Akbar, you will notice that paintings are being made of Akbar himself. And after that, these paintings, these miniature paintings as they are called, they kept evolving more and more under the subsequent rulers. And especially it attained a lot of significance under Jahangir. The answer for this question, however, where the transition half happened, how it shifted, that shift happened under Akbar only. The answer is option B. So with that, we have come to the end of medieval Indian history questions for the years 2015 to 2019 in UPSC prelims. So as always, Please subscribe to the channel to listen to more such videos where we'll be solving more of these questions, previous years UPSC questions. 
which is going to be very useful for you. And as a supplement to this video, please look at the link below to download the answer key with detailed explanations for all these questions that we have seen in this video. Thank you.